Hey, I am Paul. I'm the vinyl co-manager at Coletco, and I wanted to make a quick video with like 15 or so records um, that are in my collection. Just kind of went on Discogs and looked at what I have listed in my collection and went from like A to maybe the beginning of D and just pulled a few things out to kind of showcase what I look for. I'll probably make more videos later with more records in my collection. Um, behind me is just a one shelf of my collection. I've um, been doing it for a pretty good while and like four years ago or so I trimmed it down significantly and kind of almost started over and um, now it's probably quantity wise larger and the quality is better. Uh, for me anyways um, I used to just buy stuff because it'd be like well I don't really like this record but if someone comes over and they want to hear it I've got it um, without further ado if you hear the music behind me um, listening to Banshee which was on Atlantic um, I guess it just didn't sell very well but if you can imagine like Crosby, Stills and Nash trying to make like a hard rock record, that's kind of what this ends up being and I love that cover art. It's fantastic. And it's in the shrink wrap with an old promo record sticker on it. Um, yeah, that's what we're listening to. Um, I don't think the videos can be monetized or anything, so I don't think we have to worry about a copyright strike or anything like that. Um, the next one is kind of a twofer and it also includes the only 45 that I pulled out the show today. I'll just take it out of the sleeve but 13th floor elevators, the psychedelic sounds of the 13th floor elevators, really nice copy and it's the uh, original mono. Oh yeah, on that original international artist label. Just a groundbreaking record um, as far as psych and garage goes and Rocky Erickson is a great songwriter, great vocalist, um, the jug playing on there is just so good too, can't go wrong there. And I've also got the uh, first issue of You're Gonna Miss Me on Contact Records which was actually put out before they signed with international artists. And, um, Got the LP and the 45 from the same person, and if you happen to see this video, you know who you are, and thank you. Um, I also like to buy or listen to and collect records that I think are fantastic, but maybe they're a little bit overlooked, and um, they're just as good as the big ones that you've heard of, but this is a Canadian band. And this is the Collectors. Again, awesome artwork. This is a very psychedelic record. This is the back, really nice. Um, still a pretty cheap record. Um, you can probably get it for like 20 or 30 bucks in really good shape. And let's see. After I get this in, I'll kind of show you how I like to store my records. I, uh, I guess you kind of already saw, but, you know, I know a lot of people like to do this, put it in the outer sleeve and then have the record behind it. That kind of helps from, or prevents, uh, like, seam splits, fine splits. It also helps prevent ring wear a little bit. And I guess I don't even show it's on that Warner label. But if you like Psych and you haven't listened to that one, definitely check it out, especially if you like The Doors brand of Psych. Um, I didn't even realize I pulled out two records on international artists for this video. This one is Bubble Puppy. And this is kind of psychedelic, hard rock with some progressive moves for sure. Um, killer, killer record. There's the... Uh, international artist label you might have heard bubble puppy already and if you have i would highly recommend tracking this one down as well this is demian and it is 
the exact same lineup as Bubble Puppy. Same people. They uh, when they went over to ABC Records for this one, they wanted them to change their name because they thought Bubble Puppy was a name that sounded like it didn't really represent their sound very well. It kind of sounds more like it would be a, uh, a bubblegum pop band or something, and they're definitely not that. They really rock out. So got southern rock leanings with twin guitar solos and everything. Killer stuff. Um, kind of blown through these, but next is the Baroques. And this is a really early psych record, really. I mean, it's definitely got some heavy garage elements as well. Um, it's on Chess Records, of all things, which is odd. You would expect it to maybe be on Cadet, but I can't remember when they started doing the Cadet Records subsidiary, but it must have been right after this. But, you know, there's the Baroques. Fantastic. Um, Rose Colored Glasses is a great track. What's that other one? Bicycle's a fun one. And I don't know, there's some goofy moments on it, but it really. I love it. I love it. It's great. Um, let's see. Let me get this back in the sleeve and I'll show you the next one. It's a doozy. Um, of course, growing up, I listened to a lot of, like, Led Zeppelin, Black Sabbath, um, you know, all that, like, early 70s hard rock that you hear on the radio all the time, and I, I'm always trying to track down stuff that is in that same vein, but maybe you didn't hear it on the radio, or if it was on the radio at all, it might have been on, like, AM radios, more underground, but this is a, uh, original... UK copy of Andromeda. Sleeve's a little ratty, but it is a very, very difficult record to find in good shape, and it has become very expensive. It's odd because it's on the RCA Victor label. Um, they're just saying, if you like Led Zeppelin or Black Sabbath or Budgie, anything like that, you need to check this one out. Um, See, before they were Andromeda, they were the five-day week straw people, and they put out like a psych album that they recorded in like a day or something, and that's a really good record, but the front man of this band is John Can. I know it's, I know the image is mirrored, <laughs> but John Can went on to uh, write and play with Atomic Rooster for their first couple records. Um, so if you've listened to Atomic Rooster and you're like, I like that, that's another reason to check out Andromeda. Um, I believe this one has been reissued a couple times, so if you don't want to throw down a lot of money for an original, you've always got that option. Um, another one... Yeah, Campo di Marte, this is a... Uh, Italian Prague monster and uh, I think this is probably more in the vein of like King Crimson kind of it's definitely proggy very Italian but it's pretty heavy too and there's some killer guitar work on here um, it's on United Artists it's another tough one to find in good shape but uh, got lucky and was able to find a copy for sale on Instagram <laughs> Um, sometimes if you're watching the right people and following the right people, the things you're looking for will find you eventually. Um, so those were all originals. There's definitely stuff that I like that is exceptionally difficult to find and very expensive. Uh, higher than my personal budget would be for buying a record. And uh, the mix two records that I'm about to show really showcase that. Um, got CA Quintet, Trip Through Hell. The artwork is awesome. This is a uh, reissue on Sundays, but this was a uh, private press record, or privately pressed record, and um, I believe these guys were from Minnesota. Um, originals go for 
at least a thousand dollars. If they're in good shape, they're gonna go for probably two or three thousand, but that's what this one looks like. It's on red vinyl, it sounds good. Um, Sunday's always does a really good job with their reissues and their, uh, their catalog is great. They uh, put out obscure stuff like this, but they also put out some, you know, out of Leonard Cohen and Bob Dylan, stuff like that, but uh, Bobber went over there and just does a fantastic job <clears throat> mixing. And uh, Jay Millar also had some of those projects. They've got a really good team over there at Sundays. And this one, this, the original of this would probably, if I had to pick one grail record, like one album that I know that I'm never going to get, but I would, if I could get it, that would be the one to get. I'm having a tough time getting this out of the outer sleeve. It's tight. Okay. So I've got a light me attic reissue of it. It's dark around the edges. Um, I believe this was the original back cover or front cover, sorry, it's on the back now, and this was on the back on the original releases, but also the original releases, uh, they were all a little bit different. I think they only made, like, I, I want to say it was 64 original copies, and some of them are, like, hand-drawn and colored and stuff like that, and just exceptionally difficult to find. Um, I think the first person that kind of discovered the record in the UK, it was like digging through a guy's collection, saw this album, and thought it looked interesting, so he'd put it on the turntable, and when he heard it, he was worried that the guy selling it was gonna hear it and be like, oh no, that one's not for sale, or it's, you know, this absurd price, but he sold it to him for really cheap, because he was like, you like this junk? <laughs> the recording is very lo-fi, it's a, it was a private press in the UK, and uh, it's a power trio, and uh, just some killer, killer guitar jams on here. Really fuzzed out, heavy, um, proto-metal, I would say, for sure. The cover doesn't really give that vibe, you would think this would be more of like a folk record or something, maybe, but again, if you like early 70s hard rock, give this my recommendation dark round the edges and some other things that I like to try to track down or think are interesting are like um, archival releases where maybe it was recorded in like 60 you know in the 60s or 70s or whatever but for whatever reason the album got shelved and uh, just didn't get released at the time this is calcium it's a French psych band. Um, just incredible. <laughs> it's so good. It was recorded in 1969, but they didn't release it until like five or six years ago. I think 2017, maybe. That's when this came out. And um, they only put out like a batch of 500 copies of this thing. And uh, it's on like a clear with smoky swirl, vinyl, whatever, um, just incredible, it, it, if you like psych and like French pop, um, it's stylistically pretty, um, dynamic, but just quality all the way through is like a, at least an 8 to a 10, kind of knock my hat off just thinking about it, <laughs> let's see, yeah, calcium, check that out. So good. Um, and then, yeah, I don't. I, another thing, I, I don't really like getting reissues again. But it's another one that is just extremely difficult to find originals of in good shape for a good price. It's Comus. Opens up to. Uh, wild looking this <laughs> it's a folk record believe it or not so if you were to swap the discs on this for this you might it might make more sense visually but I'll say it's a folk record but it is pretty demented the <laughs> the lyrical content um, this album 
pretty brutal. Um, apparently, I can't remember his name, but the guy from Opeth loves this album. So if that gives you any idea, um, if you're like, you hear that I say it's a folk record, but you're a metalhead, maybe you should still check it out because it is, like lyrically and thematically, it's definitely got more of a metal <laughs> tinge to it. And um, it's, it's beautiful too. There's some beautiful parts. It's instrumentally very odd. Definitely acid folk. Um, I think if you like Incredible String Band, I don't, that's not even a good comparison really. It's very different, but just give it a listen and see if you like it. You might, you might not. Um, I love it, but I had to get a reissue because original copies that are clean go for, I don't know, 700 to 1,000 bucks, typically. Um, so this is one that I picked up quite a while ago for a really good price, and it just keeps going up and up in value, and um, I understand why. It's uh, David Axelrod, Song of Innocence. Uh, just a great instrumental, funky, jazzy, psychedelic, fuzzy record. Um, yeah, it's an original copy on Capitol. Um, yeah, if you like the electric prunes um, kind of thing, not the first one or underground, but I think Mass Enough Minor and Release of an Oath, David Axelrod produced those and pretty much created those albums because I think the electric firms were hardly even present for those recording sessions. Um, but yeah, David Axelrod, Song of Innocence. Check it out. It's great. And so getting away from the rock and folk and stuff like that, I also collect jazz and uh, this is if not my favorite jazz record, it's probably top three, but Alice Coltrane, Journey in Satchitananda featuring Pharaoh Sanders. Love Alice Coltrane and Pharaoh Sanders. Alice Coltrane, of course, playing harp on most of this, piano a little bit. Pharaoh Sanders all over it with the sax. Um, and yeah, it's got to keep it on the sleeve, but the original on ABC Impulse. And I mean, if you see, if you like jazz at all and you see anything on ABC Impulse, for a good price, check it out because uh, the catalog is really deep and really solid. Um, let's see what else. I do collect some punk stuff as well, but I'm always looking for first pressings of them. But yeah, just Dead Kennedys, um, yeah, Fresh Fruit for Rotting Vegetables. The I guess I think this was the first cover was this orange and white, and it was taken off or withdrawn. Not exactly sure why, but it's also got the poster that folds out really big. I'm not going <laughs> to unfold it right now because I'll spend 10 minutes putting it back together and getting it back in the sleeve. But yeah, Dick Kennedy's Fresh Fruit for Riding Vegetables. Fantastic record. Got the logo on the label there. And Chad loves to hype this kind of stuff up, and I get it completely but um i do like to find top copies or you know really nice ones and this is an example that i could find in my collection captain beefheart and the magic band shiny beast bat chain cooler this is an original in the shrink wrap and yeah it's just incredibly clean and that's the last record that i was going to show and that's also the end of that first side of banshee so, yeah, I'm Paul. That's a little bit of the type of stuff I collect. I tried not to go for too long, but it looks like I'm coming up on 20 minutes. Um, hope you enjoyed, and maybe I'll make some more. See you guys later. Thanks.